Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to have a look at Makulu Linux. This is we're going to look at the Flash version that just came out. There are a few different uh, Makulu builds out there, and uh, we're just going to have a look at this one. Uh, before we dive on in, you can help support the channel. Uh, definitely subscribe if you've not already done so. Give us some likes or dislikes, whichever. Either one will help the algorithm. And let me know some comments uh, in the comment section down there. So, uh, what is Makulu Linux? Well, this is based on Ubuntu. They have a couple different builds. They have a core build. Uh, let's see if I can get the site to work. There you go. So we have a core build, uh, which is a more um, a more modern take. The older one used to be a lot more Windowsy like. Now it's a little bit more Macy like, at least on that one. I think they have the Lindos one. I think is now the more uh, Windows looking one. So this guy here is actually the first one that I saw. So they have a menu here that's similar to the Windows. Although if they switched over to Plasma, there actually is a like almost exact perfect Windows 10 theming available in Plasma now. So you have the Windows, you have the basic core, which is like your Mac, and your Flash is kind of designed for uh, older systems. They call it a traditional slash retro style Linux that focuses on ease of use, comfort, stability, and pure raw speed. Or you have a need for speed, you need to check out Makulu Linux. All right, so uh, they do release a few different versions of this a year. Uh, one of the things that they had indicated here is uh, GTK uh, 3.20 broke a lot of themes, so they've actually gone through and fixed a lot of the theming issues that you might find. And uh, they do have, in my opinion, way more stuff, a lot of things that would be bloat. Uh, that even a lot of people would consider bloat. I always have a problem when you install wine out of the box because not everybody needs it, and this opens up your computer susceptibility to Windows malware, which is a problem. I love the idea, the approach. If you say, hey, here's a wine installer easily from the menu if you want to run Windows programs, great way to do it. That would be uh, a better option for sure. Uh, than, than just installing it out of the box. But they do have 32-bit library support for optimizing Steam, which is a big deal because Ubuntu dropped that by default. You can still install it, but uh, this distribution has it already working. So if you are using things like, like Discord or Steam or Wine Games, Makulu's already set up and configured for you. Um, for me, I do not like those things being in there by default because it opens up some more issues and some more challenges. All right, so here, uh, this is Makulu based on the 2020 series, XFCE kernel 5.3. Uh, this is uh, just released a couple days ago, 64-bit. They do have a couple different menu options, a lot of different uh, wallpapers, 24 different theming options, 10 um, colored icon sets, so a lot more of direct bling for, uh, for all that kind of stuff. Uh, so that is, uh, that's kind of what we are going to get. So let's go ahead and, uh, boot this distro up and, uh, see what it's going to happen to look like. All right. So here we are in the process of booting up. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to boot full screen for us or not, since it's based on XFCE, it probably won't just because XFCE no longer boots full screen on my version of virtual machine. So that's not a criticism of the distro. That's just in my virtualization environment. You can see we have a nice loading animation screen. We have a nice spinning M around here. Uh, definitely they put a lot into UI design and that's one of the greatest benefits of Makulu. Um, I did have a few issues with the installation. It actually uh, booted up the installation media to a um, uh, it booted up the installation media to a password prompt screen, and uh, I guessed at the password, guessed it the first time. It was Makulu Makulu, and then that enabled me to get everything all uh, all set up and configured. Installation did take a little bit longer, mostly because there is a lot of software pre-installed on this. Um, so let's just go ahead and, uh, maximize that and, uh, let's go ahead and jump right on in. So here, uh, you can see the desktop does, uh, the wallpaper things do change around, uh, quite a bit. They do have this wallpaper switcher here. So if you do not like swapping wallpapers, uh, that's actually down here. So this is your, uh, configuration setting for the wallpaper switcher. I'm going to leave it on here for the sake because I think it adds to it. Now, uh, when we first land on the desktop, you can see it is it is a very modern transparency uh, based type distribution with um, your basic Windows type look and feel to it. And uh, overall, though, it has a very good, very comfortable regular feel. 
So out of the box, we can minimize all open windows, basically the minimize button. We have an update manager. We have a software center. We have Google Chrome is installed by default. So uh, many of my you viewers will not like that by default, but you can go ahead and install things. If Thunar is our file manager, we do have a donate button up here. So if you want to help support it, and if you are using it as a daily driver, I always recommend helping to support the distributions. Now we actually have two menus in this one. We have your uh, more Windows-esque type one here. We also have a menu down on the opposite side of the screen, which is supposed to be a full screen. Apparently that one's not working though. Hmm. Well, that menu's supposed to be working down there in the bottom corner, but it's not working for me for whatever reason. All right, let's go ahead and have a look at what software center we have. All right, looks like we have GNOME software. So you can go ahead and uh, install any software that you want through this guy here. Not my favorite, uh, mostly because of how slow it is. Uh, now on the first boot, and this is the first boot of it, it is going to be a little bit slower than uh, further boots because of caching, things like that. You can see here under audio video, we have a lot of uh, system tools here, easy, ready to go. Uh, let's see if we go back, let's have a look at, uh, that's the one I was just in. Let's have a look at games. case dope wars what is that nonsense oh my lance that's why i don't play games all right <laughs> productivity uh, okay so we have a variety of different uh productivity tools available here so a lot of a uh, lot of options there the theming overall is nice and consistent now when you first boot this guy up there is a welcome screen let's see if i can reboot that welcome screen or not i'm not sure if i can um I would like to kind of show that. Uh, I'm not sure if it is on here to boot up, if I can uh, boot it up again. But the welcome screen does walk you through setting up system snapshots, uh, updates. It does walk you through your theming options to control your various theming colors and things like that. Uh, we have our software updater. So this is going to be checking for updates to the basic software. We'll let that kind of do its thing. Of course, we have uh, Conky over here, which is giving us our system processes. You can set whether you want this to be a light themed or a dark themed. Uh, I went with the light themed just based on the wallpapers of there. It's not quite as good on this one here. You can see there are a lot of updates here. Uh, I do not want to install updates right at this point in time. Let's have a look at our themes. So themes and 3D. <clears throat> this is their, their uh, tool to give you the various theming colors. So if you can go ahead and swap around to any of the color theming that you want out of the box. This is actually just such a nice theming option, <clears throat> especially since... KDE, or excuse me, <laughs> we're on XFCE, does not generally have the best theming options as it is. This one here, though, does give us a lot more theming choices and theming options. We have 3D on, 3D off, so let's go ahead and turn this on. Let's see if that doesn't crash anything or not. So there we are with 3D. Now we have a lot more transparency throughout all of the menus and everything. So some people are really going to like that. Some people are not. You can see it uh, enabled wobbly windows, which I think is kind of cool at first. But it really, I actually ran this in production for a while. Let me tell you something. Wobbly windows gets really annoying when you're actually trying to get work done. But if you do actually like that type of bling, like I love the transparency of this. But I'm not necessarily a huge fan of... Um, <clears throat> of all the wobbly windows. Although you can actually go in and uh, change those. Um, uh, let's see if I can find the Compiz window manager settings over here. It's been a while since I've done Compiz. Uh, but in here is actually where we're going to have our wobbly windows somewhere. And uh, since I don't use um, I don't use this as much in production, I can't remember exactly where it is. Let's see if I can find it. There we are, let's toggle off wobbly windows. So now I have my nice transparency without, ooh, look at that though, whoa, yeah, baby. All right, <laughs> are we having fun now? Woohoo! Uh, that's actually kind of fun stuff, all right. Of course, I don't know which desktop this was Compiz is on. Oh well, <laughs> we don't need that anymore. So we do have the, the good theming options as well. Let's go ahead and have a look at themes and 3D again. Go with a darker mouse cursor there. All right. Um, 
Let's see if I can find the conky settings or not. Uh, I wanted to see if I could change the, the colorations there. All right, let's go ahead and have a look at the software that's installed because I mentioned a little bit of bloat. So over here, uh, we have leaf pad disks. Um, we have screen readers, USB stick formatters, a lot of cool stuff over here. Not a lot here I'm going to complain very heavily about. Of course, uh, with the exception of, I did mention I don't like it when computers have Wine pre-installed because it will allow .exe files, aka computer viruses targeting Windows, to run on your system. So I would only install Wine if it's something that you absolutely know that you need. We have LibreOffice, we have games, again, Steam, Play on Linux. Um, not everybody needs Steam and or Play on Linux, so that's actually something. Uh, but if you are a gamer, for sure, you're going to want to install this stuff anyway. That's why I mean it could be considered bloat. We have Lutris as well for uh, more gaming platforms, just a couple of uh, simple games there. Graphics, we have, uh, we have Pinta, Nomax, MyPaint. Uh, Shotwell, LibreOffice Draw, and Document Viewer. So not a lot there. Under Internet, Discord. Not everybody wants Discord. And I have a philosophy if Discord's installed, it should definitely be installed as something that is containerized. I'm not sure if this one's containerized or not. Um, but it's there if you need it. Hey, it's already there. Most of my followers will not like the fact that Google Chrome or Skype is installed by default. Uh, we have OpenDrive, so a simple Google Drive client. We have pCloud online storage, Megasync. Again, not everybody, these are niche applications that not everybody necessarily wants. And so installing things like this on every computer build out of the box is a little bit more risky. So on multimedia, we have an audio recorder. That's actually nice. Uh, not every distro comes with one of those. We have uh, PAVC, XFCE Burn, MPV Media Player, Kazamis. All right. Under Office, we have Evolution. Oh, it's a distro after my own heart. I love Evolution. Um, it's not for everybody, but it is absolutely beyond a doubt my favorite Linux uh, email client just because it has the old feel and functionality of the older versions of Outlook, which is exactly what I need to run my businesses. I don't like this new new approach where every email is its own separate isolated folder. It drives me crazy because of how I filter emails for my businesses. All right. So we do have um, we do have a full LibreOffice suite. Let's have a look at our versions. This, this is based on an LTS Ubuntu. It should be a more recent version, but I don't know. It could be old. Kind of based on what we saw the uh, Linux Mint versus Linux Mint Debian edition. Who knows? All right, so let's have a look. Uh, we have 6.4. Okay, so this is actually like the latest and greatest LibreOffice. Uh, our icons, like everything is scaled much larger in this. Um, definitely interesting. Let's check our spieling cheeker because I always like checking my spieling cheeker. Make sure my spieling cheeker works. Which it does. But we do not apparently have the other, uh, the other tools like our uh, synonym checkers and things like that. So we are missing a few of the plugins. Theming is a little bit white for me on this one here. Uh, it is very bright. Uh, I like some things like like GNOME, I think, does this really well where it's still a light theme, but it has some more color gradients to make it a little bit easier to, to look at. Um, let's see. Let's not save that one. And let's see. What else do we have under Office? We have Settings. So a few different setting options here. Uh, let's have a look at our appearance again. All right, so here's your basic appearance options. So you have a few different appearance options. We have your your basic XFCE ones, and you also have your uh, your 3D uh, themes and 3Ds, which will give you different different views. Now, I did notice when I changed from the I changed into my uh, my 3D and transparency levels. Uh, one of the things I did notice is that I got the Windows 7 like icon borders on things, uh, only on some things. So there is a little bit of inconsistency in the theming. So let's have a look at that. So here you can see two different window borders. So we have a little bit of inconsistency of the theming. Let's see if that is indeed came, came from the 3Ds and effects. So let's go ahead and turn off 3D effects and see what happens. Okay, so that actually there are theming issues irregardless of the 3D or effects. Okay, so we do notice some difference in your theming. That's something I don't generally care as much about, but a lot of people do. 
And so that's an important thing to spot. Uh, overall, we are noticing that this is exactly as advertised. This is fast. Like, holy crap, this is fast. Um, and for a distribution, uh, no, no, we're not sending stuff automatically to Google. What am I, insane? All right, so uh, here uh, it is fast. Things are loading very quickly. They have completely done as they have advertised uh, as far as everything is fast. More system software than I would like. I'm not having this menu down here is not working. This is, um, I believe that this is supposed to be like a full screen menu. That's what their, uh, that's what their notice has indicated. So uh, with all that, um, I don't know, what do you think? Is this one for you or not for you? Uh, major pros, it's very fast. It's XFCE, very light based. It is still 64 bit only. Uh, but if you are looking for something for a lower end system like my Lenovo S21e, this is a very logical choice. It's it's nice. It's modern. It has a lot more software than I personally would like, but that's actually okay with me. I'm not. That's not a deal breaker. Um, I'll add and remove software as I need. Uh, but it might have more software than than most people are interested in. We do have some other tools, boot repairs. We have Bleach Bit in there. We can, can uh, adjust the auto login, driver managers, grub customizers. Okay. Um, I don't like that it has Wine built in, uh, pre-installed by default. I don't like Google Chrome and some of the other applications that they chose to install as well. I thought we're a little bit more on a negative side. Uh, also on the negative side, I did have some issues installing it. It did the live the live C CD that I installed, that I downloaded and uh, booted up. It actually required a username and a password, which I guessed at. It's Makulu Makulu. And uh, once I got into there, the installation did run pretty smoothly, but that's something that I'm curious as to why it did that. So even running in a virtual box here, we are running very good, very smooth. So it's definitely one of those run of the mills. Uh, if you're looking for something cool and fun, this could be a logical choice. If you are just, uh, if you're just into the more traditional things, you want to stay with your standard Ubuntu's or mints or, or arches or things like that. That's okay too. But, uh, let me know your thoughts on Makulu flash 2020 in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you've not already have a look at switch to linux.com forward slash support. If you'd like to help support the channel and we will catch you guys next time.